Right. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be Great here. to see you. Great to see you too. You're a brave girl. Thank you. So how did the story start? Uh, the original story goes back to 2004, where I uh, sent a book to Neil Peart of the band Rush, and uh, within a week, my whole home, my computer, um, everything in my house was tagged, and I was tagged with a communication system, which was based on covert technology and synthetic telepathy. And Why? What led to that? Uh, I would say for experimentation purposes mainly. Um, after all the uh, programs they ran me through, it seemed to me like they were just running a battery of tests to see where I was at and so far as synthetic telepathy, remote viewing, um, pattern recognition, and some of the things that they did where they programmed me into seeing colors, numbers, codes. And literally I was a walking spy bird and was trained as such by my handler at that time. So um, now, let's, wh why should they do that let, let, let's spin back to how how this started and what how you got into the relevant programs and what led you to even be noticed okay i think what led me to be noticed was i, I had response in the past um way back in the 80s um you know just a normal communication where he would send me a postcard if i would send something to him so i have a sense that that was um but also my at my at the time they inducted me my electromagnetic field and my my light body was amped up into my Merkaba, which was very recognizable if anybody was doing a flyby or remote scanning. So when you have uh, an enhancement in your psychic abilities and you're already amped up, that gives them kind of a, a green light and so far as more interest in how that goes. So I was tagged, I sense, due to that ability. And once they tagged my own signal, they interfaced it onto their communication system where it would, be, it would bounce around to music on radios and um, any type of interactive sounds, frequencies, voice patterns, you name it. Now, what led to you? What led to your interest in, in even discussing the terms macabre? Did you have any experiences when you were young? Yeah, well, actually, I've always been very psychic as a child. Uh, grew up knowing and seeing things ahead of time, very advanced, and uh, reading when I was like four years old. Um, but the macabre and my spiritual lifestyle just kept growing and evolving as I was growing up. So I wound up doing psychic readings for people, um, healing work, and I started getting into ascension work, which was based on DNA activation and activating certain keys and codes within the body to enhance the abilities of an individual. So that's where my spiritual now, side uh, Something which we've noticed here in Britain is that people with certain blood groups are being specifically targeted by certain organizations. I don't want to say too much, uh, but there are organizations a lot of people would treat every day as the most trustworthy people what do you think, do you have any special qualities in that regard, which, which would heighten you on the radar? Probably. Yeah, I look back on my mother's side of the family, and yeah, there's a lot of royalty with Scotland, Ireland, France. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely we have a That's a big a signal. That's a big... Yeah. And in yeah. what way, uh, I mean, the reason why I say that, because we've interviewed at the Amash Project a guy called John Shelton, and he has very similar qualities and he actually used to work for the British Ministry of Defence, but it was the health service that targeted him. Uh, and we found that the, uh, they seem to be after certain people, specifically anybody who can telepath or do anything like that. So what about your story? That's the same thing. I mean, insofar as I was at a level of consciousness where it was easy for them to tag my electromagnetic field and tag and map my, my neural circuitry and then interface it onto a communication system in an underground area which is literally covert technology. Um, and it was in, integrated into other departments, other black operations departments as well. So yeah, they were mapping everything from my vitals, brainwave activity, you name it, and interfacing that onto their communication system. So I do get that um, there is a certain level of consciousness we're looking at, a certain development of uh, physical, mental, spiritual. Also, I'm a black belt and a martial artist, and I taught martial arts right, right before I was inducted. You know, I was teaching martial arts class, and that's a very grounding um, empowering type of thing to do. So I couldn't get derailed very easily by these guys. They really tried to screw me up and program me, and I, I broke orbit with the programming. So. Now, you said an awful lot of complicated things there, tagging your electromagnetic field or, or your, electric, your bioelectric field and things. A, how do they know, and B, how do they tag it? They tag it to the satellite driven technology. Um, insofar as how they know, it, it's a measuring thing. They, they can map the electromagnetic field, and when I say they map it, they're using it. Map every 
at the body system. So that's neural circuitry, brainwave activity, uh, vibratory rate, you name it. Um, whatever you're emanating, they can map. And that does include the brainwave now, activity as well. If, if, you, if you, you're coming out with a lot of very brilliant terms here, and because of the Skype, we need to try and speak a little bit slower. Uh, okay. Because what happens Hard is the sound can gate a little bit, and then we can lose a couple of words. Uh, okay. But... Uh, that's a whack of stuff you just said there. So let's just go back to so that people who aren't familiar with this can understand the terms. And for instance, if somebody has got these abilities and they're finding terrible things happening to them, they can understand it in each stage. Now, you started to enhance your own abilities. And then what happened to the tagging? How did this, how did they notice you? And how do you, well, let's, I'm guilty of the same thing. Let's get one thing straight. How do we get tagged? What? How do we get noticed? Uh, and you mentioned about how they tap into the communication system. Because, uh, this is very interesting from my point of view because this is something which we, uh, we discovered as a pirate radio broadcaster. We were completely independent. But mm -hmm. we noticed that there were very important factors which... I don't want to go into my story. I want to hear from your story. But there were very important factors involving very strange, intelligent, black fluidic energies. But let's... And I noticed James Casbolt has mentioned stuff that he can see coming out of the transmitters. And uh, we shared that ability. So what... How do they tag you? When, when they tag why, me... No, why no, should they tag you? What specifically in your EM field or your bio field or whatever you want to call it is... what the problem okay but my senses and this is my own take on the old the induction itself was my Merkaba, which is my light body has shifted into a multi-dimensional space of consciousness which is a very powerful signature universal celestial heartbeat and pulse and this pulse merges with the universe universal energies so it is my sense that they t they were intrigued by that and they tagged me. So, so now that's who's they doing. and how do they, they find out they originally was at the parties of Rush. And I know that sounds very out there, but Neil Peart, Michael J. Mosbach was a personal handler. The members of Rush were involved in the initial tagging and induction in my house, which was satellite driven. And had it not been for me sending my book to Neil Peart, I would not have been inducted. I know that. No, Later on. Sorry, sorry. Right. Why does a rock band get involved with this stuff? Surely they just guys who go out and play great music and away you go. Oh, um, well, they're musicians second and over technology is probably first for them, but insofar as Neil Peart goes, if you do any type of real um, investigations on him, you'll notice that he's been involved in signals covert technology for a very long time. And one thing about this telepathy is that they use it for their surveillance, they use it for protection. Um, Michael J. Mossbach was hearing and listening through synthetic telepathy interface with Neil Peart, and that's that's the covert hearing system. That's a special hearing they have for for listening without headsets, basically. So it's an, it's an enhanced form of, of telepathy without the wires and the headset. So how do they listen in? Have they been enhanced or are they non-humans to start with? I would say they've been enhanced. I, I, it's, hot, it's possible they're hybrids, but I would say they've been enhanced. They've been involved in the covert aspects of the technology for a very long time. And when I talked to Michael J. Mossbach in person on Maui, and I asked him if he had had a hearing like mine, he admitted he did. So we have now, an You're insight. talking about being able to, for instance, hear... Sorry, I, see, there's a lot of concepts here which are which I think we really need to uh, explain. Uh, if you're hearing something, are you talking about uh, a number of the people in the Amash project uh, have heard that they could they it was so they could hear taxis five miles away and he, hearing which is incredibly uh, pristine and uh, and with tremendous abilities. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's um it's a covert communication system that no one else can hear but you and your handler or anybody actually packed in or hijacked onto the communication system. In so what that, way, how does that work? Is it uh, uh, at uh, what, what frequencies, what, what wave bands are we talking about? Frequencies myself because I'm trying to decode everything. Um, it's more than a scalar wave and it works a lot with zero point energy. That I know. It's not just a regular mock radio signal. Um, now, for instance, a scalar wave is, uh, is an acoustic wave. It's, uh, so you're talking about waves which are above normal human hearing. But um, it's beyond that. It's more like a zero point. I know that because I've been kind of researching different kinds of waves of the technology itself. But I do know 
that app brainwaves to such an extent that it interfaces it onto their communication system where it's almost um, created their own it's, copy it's, of the holographic mind. Now, that's really interesting because some, some of the first uses of the transatlantic satellite communication system was the transmission of brainwaves. And the brainwaves were being transmitted from England to the States, and then whatever, something was happening to them, and then they were picking, they were sending them back. Yeah, I keep thinking Tesla comes to speak of that, but um, yeah, that we all advanced beings, and we are able to telepathically connect into others. We all have that ability. They enhance it through their communication system. Unfortunately, they're misusing the technology, and they're using it for programming people. Um, yeah, no, for for, what I want to find out is what is the technology, and how does it work? Can, can we work on that initially? Well, I've been working on it for years now, and I've written a few books. <laughs> but let, Okay, well, let, 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 let's talk about the books. Let's talk about how people can understand and find out about this. Um, well, I have a couple books out. The first one was put out in 2008, and that's called Eye of the Remote, Black Operations in Areas Beyond 52. And, and that can we book get covers those on Amazon and things? On Amazon.com and um, also my publisher as well, which is Author House Books. But it covers the induction itself. It covers the technology. It covers what I went through as a lab rat and a test pilot for their technology. And it, it just kind of goes over parallels between spirit and what their version of, of what they're trying to do to control and manipulate the source energy, which is your spiritual design. So it covers a lot of different things from a, a spiritual level to a covert technology level. And then I also have my recent book out, which is um, Programmed by Deception. And that's the series. I just released that. And that one's on so it's basically on how everything has been a false reality and a lie and that every piece, piece of data, including words and languages, have been used to control and manipulate the masses. Great. Now, the, the thing we want to understand is how did you get in the lab to start with? How did this story start? How did you get plugged into the system in the first place? And that's what happened when I submitted my book, Transmutation Through Ascension, to Neil Peart back in 2004. And it was through that experience, through sending him the book, that... Under, put under surveillance and eventually tagged and inducted into their covert program. Okay, now how do they physically tag you? Do they, is, there, is it something that's physically done to you or in an implant or something? Absolutely, it's a satellite-driven technology, but they tag, they tag your electromagnetic field. They tag your electromagnetic field, but they also are using um, a type of zero-point transmission, I'm pretty sure, to, to create certain signals and signatures within the body. Um, it's, it goes beyond a regular implant. And when I talk about my Merkaba, my signal, I had a natural Merkaba signal when I meditate and it pulses by itself. They use that. They tap. I remember when it happened. And now it's gone to a communication system where it bounces to music on radios. It interacts. It's, um, it's almost like a symbiotic communication with, with anything that makes a noise or a sound. I've had that for 10 years almost. So, and they're measured. These so in other measured. words, they're just listening for your signal, your frequency and your frequency codec. Right. Yeah. At the same time, it feels like they've also modified it, which really doesn't make me feel real good. So I've been modified to some extent, and, and that still coming to terms with what exactly that entails. Doing a lot of research in, in my own design to try to figure that out. So, so uh, how do they, uh, in what way is this system working? It, it, there must be tagging and looking at millions of people. Mm hmm. Right. Have you been able to follow? Have you been able to follow back where they're tagging you to? Have you been able to travel? Can you see what what's tagging? What, what's actually back there? What computer system or whatever's involved there? When I first got tagged, yes, I saw things that were like simulation rooms, um, and I also saw something that looked like a shiny black metallic helicopter. It wasn't a helicopter, but it resembled something of that nature, like a simulation type room where it was over my right shoulder. There were um, propulsion sounds. And also, I saw the live agents, live feed, and, and visuals, and things like that. Like, converting everything to codes and numbers. I was writing in codes and numbers of things, and recognition to have me trained for colors. Um, so, in other words, for example, I could walk into a room and say the room, they want me to find blue. I wouldn't even know where the colors are on any level of my psyche. And I would, was I could turn around the room and find every target. And that programming, I, that modifications and things. Now, I, I lo a couple of the words dropped out there. In what kind of programming was that? Exactly? I would consider 
more of a, a combat type programming or something pertaining to covert uh, military, just by the way it was, uh, it seems to me like a fighter pilot technology or, or something you would use as a fighter pilot. Um, being able to numbers is very important. And you know, it's just... now what's very important, uh, sorry, I have to, uh, because of the Skype, we're losing some words. Okay. It's the way that the, uh, it drops out sometimes. So, for instance, I got the very important and the numbers, but what okay. uh, it seems that is this some kind of um, telepathic mind to, to instrumentation technology? Correct. Yes, I, I do believe that. Even though I was used as a spy bird, um, but I was their remote spy bird. In other words, I was their eyes and ears, and I was walking around being trained and programmed by them. Um, but what I do know with the symbiotic relationship between whatever they tagged inside of me, um, and I'm really clear that you can remotely pilot ships with that. I'm really clear that you can remotely pilot a lot of things with that type of telepathy. So what they have done to me was try to um, control and manipulate me more with a frequency fence. They didn't want me having control. And they went out of their way to really keep me <laughs> contained energetically on some levels and, and just program, program, program me. Until now, I this, just... is what, this was happening to you involuntarily. Correct. Yeah, I was inducted in 2004. And, you know, when I first... How were you inducted? the satellite communication system and originally it hit me in my bedroom at night and that's when i i felt all these weird energies that some were sexually oriented and when they tag you um you could hear i could start to hear the communication system i started to hear the, the handler and then eventually it kicked in full speed where i was hearing dialogue and then i was learning the dialogue it was just um, Is these vo are these voices in your head Opening up a communications channel. This is not a voice like, you know, voices. These are real people magnetic field. And opening up a communication system with a live agent in real time. And that's the part where then the handler is, they put you in a kind of euphoric space where it feels like you're on drugs of some kind. I, I, it's, it's not like, I don't, so this is. Like, it's not like what? It's like, in other words. Oh, um, I missed that. Sorry, yeah. it's, it's not like it, what? It's um, it's not like a real drug. It's it's a euphoric kind of frequency transmission drug. <clears throat> space of consciousness, and I remember feeling like I was drugged when it was a very euphoric space. It was a very um, I just felt it was down. My shields were all down, and they were just completely infiltrating. And how did that? How did you experience that? What does that actually feel like? It feels, um, at first it felt like I was shot out of a cannon. It feels like an atomic split in every cell and atom of your body. Um, your vibration was real high. And I saw um, a lot of different things, but it, it was just very intense. I almost felt like my body was shaking. It was that much power and that much energy transmitting. And then it settles in. Um, but when they tagged my chest cavity, it, that was uncomfortable. I felt the pain as they opened up the, I mean, when they tagged, they actually, it felt like a rip and a tear, and I could actually feel like pressure and uncomfortable like surgery that was done more satellite oriented. And I remember that very clearly. I remember that night. Now, the thing about satellites is that they're way up in the sky and they fly around at a tremendous speed. Uh, is there another way they were not doing this? I mean, like a non local form of induced psychotronics of some kind? You can have, there is a version where you can hang out with, um, you know, your vans and things like that and use certain radio frequencies to harass a target with psychotronic harassment and stalking. But I know this was satellite di um, driven. I'm, I'm real clear it was satellite driven. And they do have black satellites. And, and even what we think we know about the technology of satellites is nothing compared to what they've been experimenting with. It's not um, the electromagnetic field remotely. It's nothing to tap into your home and, and view things and see things um, with these type of satellites. And we won't see them for years, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll be talking, uh, I'm talking, I'm thinking of some kind of virtual, virtual matrix or field of some kind. Yeah, that sounds about right. So they set up a, a, a matrix grid of some kind, and then they use that grid to action and connect. With right. On the um, operator's end, I would say that's correct. Yeah. And unfortunately, I wasn't in the operator's room. I, I had visuals of things here and there, but I'm pretty sure that you're correct about that. Yeah. Now, what I'm, what I'm still trying to figure out is, is why you and how, how did, I mean, 
I mean, you've you've come up with an awful lot of stuff very quickly there. Uh, but I'm trying, still trying to find out. You know, you're walking down the street one day, uh, and you're just happy, and then you write a book about something, and then bingo, you're tagged. Right. Yeah. I, literally, I'm not sure. Other than the fact that obviously they found me to be a good candidate for this technology, and it worked, and I can make it work. And how did they verify that? How did they select and then test and verify? Verify. They would use um. We would, we would pass information back and forth where, where no one else could hear it, and Mossbach was the handler in that, so he received all the data, and it was confirmed. How did he the, receive the data, and how did you send it to him? I sent it through emails, but originally, before that, when we first started communicating, it was just typing on a blank screen, and the, the emails came back. What do you mean by typing on a blank screen? You, mean the, you weren't putting letters on the screen? I can type, yeah. yeah. So I say that again, it dropped out. I was typing on the keyboard, um, say, say the screen is just white, and I'm using it just to type, and then I'm going to erase. That's pretty much what I was doing. However, they have the covert access where they're behind the screen, and they're able they're key to... They're logging. Very much so. So basically, I would, and he would, you know, we would talk. We were in telepathy, and we were confirming that. So that conversation got started, and then it just went beyond remote kind of remotely controlled to some extent and piloting and, and seeing as a spy bird and things like that. So is this some kind of device where, uh, I mean, I was remember I was reading something with uh, one of Tom, Colonel Tom Bearden's books where they're sending out virtual subspace engines, which uh, the mind then activates and brings into a cognitive reality. Is, is, is that something like that where it's all in a subspace domain? It's not or would you call that zero point? That's but I'm correct about that, yeah. I mean, it definitely level. Well, I mean, it's we're having trouble here with the with the audio. It's dropping out quite a lot. I think. Do you want to just push your mic a little bit further away, this just way? so it doesn't get the puffs? Can you hear me this way, down? Yeah, or up? yeah, that's great. Because it's great. Well, I really want to hear what you're saying. It's fantastic. Okay, we can continue. Where was I? Okay, where are we? We're talking about uh, the the. the how the computers are being used. I mean, you're looking at a blank screen. You're having some kind of telepathic uh, contact mm -hmm. with somebody at the other end. I'm trying to understand how, the, how that works as a mechanism. And I'm trying to understand the mechanism of how this is working. And to me, uh, it was the set technology that opened up the communication where I could hear my handler live feed in real time. And that, there were keywords that they would use for me, which is live feed, have energy, read energy, they would say. Um, and, and they would use little things to trigger and open up a communication even further. But that technology behind it, and it's, it's based on the set up a communication system. That's the satellite communication system. Yeah. Okay, well, when I was tagged in my bedroom, when, I, when they opened up the communication system with the live agent, that was based on synthetic telepathy, which means I was hearing and listening live feed in real time. Um, when I would go to sit at my computer, which sometimes they would have me do, I would type out a sentence and they would respond telepathically. But they wanted me, I think they needed to confirm the me actually typing on the computer so that they could have a little more clarity with that. But words that they said to me were actually used later on and, and were confirmed in an album that was being recorded at the same time that I was inducted. Just to give you an idea, that was a, the the band Rush is out. How did the synthetic? Correct. How did they connect with the synthetic te uh, telepathy to start with? It's the same same technology. I basically same way I did. I imagine they were tagged the same way I was to some extent. Um, I have a strong sense Neil Peart's totally loaded up with implants and signals, and I do know he's been involved in signals intelligence. Which, which if anybody looks at that, that's covert MK Ultra based technology. Okay. So I've done my research and the good old um, MK Ultra. What is MK Ultra? Um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a program designed to control and manipulate a target into doing something, whether it be um, assassinations, uh, you know, personal security other, and surveillance. What's the difference between MKUltra and the Monarch program? Um, I don't think there's really much difference in, in, in so far as just maybe eras, different ages and different, different decades of things. But honestly, every, it's, it's really just a parallel of another one. Um, they're still using it to control and manipulate a target, um, depending on what they want to do with that person. Um, you know, they have women that are prostitutes, and they want to make them whatever, you know, personal escorts. I, I think, I'm not sure what they had in mind for me, but I do know they trained me on a lot of different levels. 
and they use a lot of sexual assaults on me to kind of lull me into a different euphoric space as well. So now what sort of levels? Okay. Um, you you mentioned in... a number of levels. Can you describe those levels and um and uh and detail them? Okay, well and I mean, for me, I would say you go through the different levels when I was talking about the earlier projects of MKUltra and Monarch and all these other programs. What they have now is more based on what I think is, is just a, a black ops synthetic telepathy project where you're being programmed on a very high level of consciousness to interface with all sorts of different things, but you're also being acclimated to radio frequencies and things that would normally probably um, make you sick. It reminds me of the super soldier program actually to some extent because I think they're, de they're creating more warlike um, warriors and they're creating um, a different breed and uh, something that's a little more resistant and not as fragile as the earlier programming with MKUltra and, and Monarch and things like that. I've known a lot of people who are Monarch and they, they're very fragile. Um, In what so, way are they fragile? Uh, I would say like children, they've been broken down to some extent that they have altars that are based on, on a childlike, um, very uh, sensitive and um, insecure side to them. And I've seen that surface on some of, of the targets. And I do know from one person who was a, a monarch boy, he actually committed suicide. He couldn't handle it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I was able to override a lot of their programming and conditioning. I kept, I kept ascending out of it. But I still have things that run that are programs like the pattern recognition numbers and codes are very big for me. And what kind of pattern pattern recognition and codes uh, are, are you are, are you talking about? Um, well, for the most are you part, like three dimensional things which extend out in, into four or five dimensions. Correct. It, it can go on many multi dimensional levels. Um, but the one thing I remember was like almost speed reading all the time. Like I would look at something and it would be super fast reading, and then I would look at a, a word, say the word B, and you're going down a book and a paragraph. And I could locate the V without even knowing the book. I would just say, boom, 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 boom. I mean, letters, A, boom, boom, boom. It's like that. That kind of a targeting where letters and numbers are very significant and colors are very significant. Patterns, um, if, if it's a certain design, I would know exactly where to look to match that design in another room or just instantaneously. I mean, these are things that I wouldn't have to be in the room or even in advance to know about. So it's an so interesting How program. would you be given the initial design? I suspect it must have been subconscious because honestly, I don't remember them programming me. That's the thing. I don't remember them programming me for colors or codes or numbers. I just knew how to do it. And that's the part that's kind of like, you know. <laughs> and, when, and when did you know all that? When did this all develop? This started developing in 2004 when I was inducted. And my live agent handler was with me all the time, 24-7, nonstop for years. And up until like 2006, when I went to court and had to deal with all that scenario, um, you know, it still started, the programs had settled in to some degree, but what I've done is rewrite a lot of the programming so that I'm not victimized by the technology anymore. And what I've been doing no. is researching. Yeah, but how do you rewrite the programming? How, how, do, you, rewrite, how do you do that? Um, I rewrite it through my own psyche, through higher self, over soul, super conscious. In other words, if, it, if it's not in alignment with the universal codes or universal energies, I break it off and disconnect it. Now, how and, do you do that? Now, this is very interesting. For instance, uh, one of the ways of short-circuiting uh, the mind control is, is you create a, 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 a dump, essentially. It, it, as soon as this happens, you dump the thought out into like, into like right? a, a sump, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, for want of a better word. But how do you actually do that? How do you arrange for that within your own mind to actually do that? How do you rewrite codes in your own mind? Well, you, um, I do it just by intent, just by canceling and, and psychologically and psychically putting it and disconnecting it and, and basically recycling it back to the universe and then just disconnecting it, period. Because it's very important where you put that thought so it doesn't come back yeah. and bite you in the ass. I used to recycle things by the law of grace back to the universe because it's more... Um, the law of which? But the law of grace. In other words, it's more transcendent. It's it's a way of softly ascending negativity out and recycling it into the universe. But you know, to me, I mean, that's my way of breaking orbit with negative programming, and it's worked to some extent. And also training, um, doing my martial arts training and and physical training has been very important to me. But also writing and reading and taking the helm with my mind because they were trying to influence it to such an extent with dialogue. 
Now, how does physical exercise uh, and those other things you were saying, how does that improve and help somebody, your mind in that respect? If you're stressed out, which a lot of people, a lot of test subjects and targets get very stressed. Um, they go through a lot of duress through the assault because the synthetic they will abuse them. It will physically abuse them, remotely abuse, abuse them, um, verbally, you name it, everything. So there has to be an out. Some people choose drugs. Some people choose the wrong thing. I am an athlete. So to me, I went and trained. And it was a way to move and move out and shout a lot of this abusive energy. Um, and, you know, they would, they would narrate terrible things to me while I was training. Back in 2004, I mean, horrible things were said to me. But I kept pushing through. Now, what no, was that, the purpose of that? Was that so they would be able to check if you could push through? I think they were trying to break me down. I think they were trying to see what, what my breaking point was, like how much can she take? And I could take a lot apparently, but I wasn't going to break for them. I was not going to break. So I kept training and I kept my center and I kept going into override mode of overriding their assault program. Is this similar to like boot camp where the sergeant major will, you know inform you of certain things in a way that would make a small boy cry? Very much so. Yeah, totally. It is it's like that type of uh, conditioning program. And when I was first inducted in 2004, I was told not to sleep with my husband. I was told I had to sleep in my clothes and that I had to be packed and ready to go at the door. And till this, until this day, I mean, I am still in that red alert sometimes. I still have a hard time resting. I'm still always on the move. I'm always like, even if I move in someplace, I always have my bags packed. Um, you know, that's the program. And I'm trying to still break orbit with that programming. It's a horrible thing. But yeah, they do that. And it is just like the military. There's no doubt about that. And that, that is there to, is that to, that's there to continue to grind you down. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's a slow death. On some levels, it's a slow bleed. Um, but, you know, you learn how to hold your own. The one thing that concerned me the most about all this was the type of tagging system where I'm, you know, my body reacts to radio frequencies, it, re it reacts to sounds and things, and I don't have any control over that. Are there any and, particular types of radio frequencies or radio signals which are specific to that? Like it's all of them. I've, I've noticed that there's not one type of frequency that it doesn't have some kind of reaction and involvement with. It's, it's like an intelligent signal that responds to everything. Um, I have more so with the music, but everything. Now the music, music programming, uh, we're very keen on, uh, we find out, in, in our, as I say, in the pirate radio business, uh, the music has been sub-programmed, but, but the right disc jockeys could de-sub-program them so that you've got a positive intention. And, uh, for instance, the old form uh, AM radio mm -hmm. seemed to be a very good way of, of initially working that but then with the right. use of fm and then digital technologies there seems to be a higher level of subliminal involved oh absolutely yeah but and the thing is that it comes to mind it's symbiotic um connections the um it's like an intelligent design a very covert extraterrestrial type thing signature that's what it reminds me of where it's able to communicate with all sorts of things and sound um like even if the wind is blowing outside my electromagnetic field responds to that Internally, the signals respond. So it's a really strange thing. And I, I mean, I don't talk about it a lot because, you know, I've had it since 2000. Just no, to give I, you. It, it seems to be much more, it seems like we're dealing with a neural net of an, of an artificial intelligence. Or an, you mentioned alien now for the first time. Yeah. Uh, what kind of alien? Uh, interdimensional or, or extraterrestrial or, or oh. terrestrial aliens that we don't know about? Right. To me, um, and I'm going by starseed here here. So I'm going by what we are as beings. And, I, and we are our seeds. We are celestial beings in this matrix on this planet. I mean, that's my spiritual philosophy. And I'm very clear that we are um, not our essence of origin is, is beings. That's my own thing. So for me, I, I suspect it's terrestrial. Um, black operation stuff that they do in covert technology seems to be a hybridization of stolen technology that they've gotten their hands on, that they're interfacing with a type of terrestrial where they're creating their own hybrid and to me I, I think they're developing some kind of an extraterrestrial themselves that's well, certainly sorry uh, certainly uh, that's what uh, I've been working on essentially here in England they call them programmable generated life forms and it seems to have gone back as far as World War II or further back I believe it uh, why would you believe that and what um, because it's it's 
possible. And secondly, they've been doing experimentation with advanced beings for a very long time. And when I say advanced, I mean, anybody who's psychic or um, trained in their own spirituality, that spirit comes from a celestial race. It comes from a type of an extraterrestrial. And that part of DNA activation is based on higher consciousness, DNA activation codes, and then descending that energy down the body, which is basically extraterrestrial. So we are that race. And it's my take that they're actually extraterrestrials in our soul design and our celestial heritage, which intrigues them, but they want to create their own version to be more like uh, controlled and manipulated and programmable and things like that. Well, them so, sounds as if it ain't us. No. What I mean, exactly them, do you mean by them? Um, I'm talking about the balls, the, the, the covert technology departments, those people who are involved in those departments and the, those people that fund them. Um, so there's certain embodiments of people that are, I believe, are programmed themselves. And so it's kind of like they want to program everybody else because that's how they are. But I don't believe they're extraterrestrials. I believe they're soulless entities that have been programmed to believe they're certain things. Now, what is a so, soulless entity exactly? A soulless entity would be somebody who occupies a physical body, but there's no soul. There's no essence of origin from the universe. And very naked, very void of spirit, um, incomplete, basically. But programmable by, by negative negative thoughts, negative waves of communication to a point where you see all these people these days where they are like that. I mean, they're all, um, there's a lot of driven entities out there is what I, I would call them. I mean, people who do this type of stuff, it's really unethical. It's, it's caused a lot of tears. It's destroyed a lot of lives. Now, something which, which I noticed in a particular institution was that they were very keen on generating rage and hate energy. Is that something you were talking about? That yeah. is used <laughs> for generating the incarnate Right. Soulless beings? But lower the vibratory rate, for one thing. If you're really expanded in higher consciousness, it's usually about love consciousness. Like, they want you angry because that constricts your electromagnetic field and your aura. And it also is, is put you in a space of their, it's more polarizing with them to a point where they can control you a little better. They always try to, to push buttons with me. Always with the psychotronic programming and the synthetic telepathy and anything. I mean, just, it was constant barrage of negative dialogue, constantly. Now, when so, you're saying negative dialogue, are you talking about people screaming at you, swearing at you, saying obscene things? How, how does that work? Basically, if I were looking at somebody, they would say something insulting about that person, you know, synthetic. <laughs> and, of course, I would, like, override, override in my mind. But the whole thing is, like, it's always negative. It's always insulting. It was never anything positive. They never communicate anything positive at all. So, um, you know, and after a while, that's that kind of negative reinforcement really, really just track magnetic field to some degree unless you're doing your own spiritual work but it also uh makes you generate uh negative goals for yourself so you can't start start essentially sabotaging your own existence true very true yeah i think you're right about that um and for me i mean i kept I, mean, I did notice they kept rewriting everything i was trying to say in my mind so i was very they would interrupt me every time I would quietly talk um, through telepathy they would interrupt and if I was verbally talking they would interrupt and it got to the point I think why I talk so fast now is because I was interfaced to such an extent with an argument that I had to hold my ground and be the one dominating the conversation <laughs> that's true <laughs> why do you talk so fast but I know you know it's yeah you get patience have you got Irish connections um, and the royal kings somewhere. My sister has done all of our lineage. And, yeah, we do have some Irish kings, um, relatives, and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, that so. might go back to Atlantis, do you think? Any connect I'm very connected to Atlantis. So that's something that connects to my celestial spiritual design before these guys showed up in 2004. So I'm very into those I'm very energy. interested to get, get down to who these guys are. I mean, who are, the, the, who are the these guys? Explain what they are. Can you give us a full background on that? Well, just the tip of the iceberg. They were, they're basically victimized just like anybody else, but they have access to the covert technology. We're dealing with somebody in black ops, um, organizations that are military-based. They obviously have military, CIA um, connection, FBI, any, anything connected to DARPA. All those divisions, to some extent, are involved. Um, they, it's like many tentacles of a monster. I mean, they all have their own contributing factors to the technology. But then there's the real black budget covert cabal, that's doing this and inducting people and programming people and manipulating people. 
And what's the call, what's the point of all this? What's what's the what do they want to achieve? I think they I don't think I oh. to see Could you do that? Could you say that again? Testing basically to see where people are at and also to see what they can get away with. Um, what the body is capable of doing. So test pilot, I think, is one of the reasons. And set create their own regime of some kind. Apparently, they want to have uh, a certain amount of people that are programmed and able to. Um, it reminds me of the super soldiers to some extent. You know, indestructible type of entities that will follow without anything, and and especially things that are very evil. But you know, what I've noticed is that there's a there's a a ceiling involved because these guys can only go so far because of their consciousness. In other words, they're not spiritually evolved enough to the level they should be to a point where they'll never be ending out of, of the technology. They'll, they're going to be limited by where they're at and their intent to the masses. So, Okay, could you just tip your, I think your, your screen's gone up a bit. If you could, if you don't, no, 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 tip the screen down. Right. Yeah, I might that, have a Yeah, that's great. That's a lot better. Great. In fact, if you could tip it just a little bit further down. Okay, I was just my feet. I don't yeah. know. Great, that 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 that's getting. But you're lovely. You're wonderful. You're great. That's a wonderful design you've got. Or does that have any those wings? It was a it might me as a Christmas present from some some really close spiritual sisters of mine. So they thought it was me and them. So I guess I, it was like me, angel. You know, to some extent, but a dark angel. Looks these like days, a wonderful but... angel or bird or something. Yeah. Ah, wonderful! Yes. So I like. So, oh, thank you. So uh, we're we're sort of in the last section of the first hour. Uh, I think what I want to do is get a good grounding as to the, exactly who these people are, what their agenda is, and uh, essentially name, explore who the them is or the they is okay so what sounds uh do you have any information which which would get, which would uh, in other words the people are being targeted and who who are they dealing with who are we dealing with or what think, are we dealing with I, I believe we're dealing with people in covert intelligence and i believe we're dealing with people who are nsa connections nsa for sure darpa for sure cia probable because of mind control and FBI is also notorious for using psychotronic harassment on their targets. So all of these divisions, and they're just the little divisions, but they're all part of the problem and not the solution. And then you have a black budget where you have a lot of, I don't want to call them elites, but people who have a lot of money to pull, to pull and, you know, strings and call the shots. So that really the ones who are controlling and manipulated the entire arena. And I don't have exact names, but to me, um, I can tell you they're just uh, the cabal, a lot of, the Rothschild types, you know, the ones that we know have of doing things that are um, not in alignment with, with anything with uh, integrity. So I think some would call them the powers that be. Yeah, possibly. I hate to give them that kind of credibility of powers of anything, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a group they can control and manipulate everyone on the planet. And I don't think extraterrestrials. These people are people, but they've had access technology like the Nazis and and they've taken this technology and they've been running with it like rogue animals. Now you brought what, the Nazis in there what do you mean like the Nazis? Yeah. So let's, just, let's just clear it up. Yeah, the Nazis, period. I mean, we, we all know that they've stolen archives of data and were obsessed with things based on mysticism and to some extent they've misused and converted a lot of that technology to control and manipulate and, and induct people into their own program. I mean, in some respects um, some people but believe, or judging by the, by certain information, that we've been misled as to who really won World War Two. I think the Nazis simply relocated to the states. Is that right? And Britain. Totally agree with that. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Now, why do you agree with that? What? What? Do you? What? Well, why are you saying that? I'm saying it, but why are you saying it? No, that has evolved technologically. That's one big giveaway. Um, we are a very young country. And yes, we took a lot of their, their scientists with us over here, and then we started doing the black, you know, covert technology experiments with mind control, and then uh, a lot of other things that were based on covert assault weapon technology. So yeah, you know, totally guilty of that. There's no doubt in my mind that they didn't, um, they didn't win the war. In other words, it was staged. Um, to me, I sense it was a stage. It was a front and just another false flag and an excuse to get what they needed to get. And they did. 
So, I mean, look what they're doing right now in the United States. It's almost like a parallel of World War II again, you know, with um, all these, oh, you know, and uh, people, you know, so now, it looks like we lost a lot of those words just when you, the specific names of what you said. Could you repeat that? Yeah, I'm talking about going on in the country today, it mirrors World War II. It mirrors the Nazis. Um, a lot of what they're doing with executive orders right now is very concerning because it's uh, enabling them to take away our liberties and our rights and also target those of us who stand up against this oppressive force, which I call the black umbrella in the United States, which is also global. It's not. Yeah. A uh, black umbrella sounds, it looks very like a, a giant octopus. Yeah. Yeah. And tendrils going everywhere. Exactly it. So what, what are these guys, I mean, what do they do in the morning? Do they get, uh, and uh, is it, if they just want a complete, what's the ultimate reason for having complete global mind control? Is it to change the matrix reality or what? I'm uh thinking, uh, the reason why I'm saying that is, it's the uh, it's the split beam experiment where if you have the observer effect, how the observer changes reality. So if you have control of the of control of the observer, you can then use the observer to manipulate a reality that you want to engineer. Does that make sense? Total sense, and all right, that will they manipulate the realities, and that's another reason if they contain you. Um, on a frequency fence, and they're using that to control and manipulate your energy field. They're restricting you from ascending to a higher frequency, and that's another part of it. They want to keep you in their lower, I want to call it lower astral, but it's a very low order energetic patterning. And you're right, that's, that's, they want as many people to think on their level, which is, which is not consciousness based, it's just a linear form of, of brainwashing it to a point where they can construct certain things. And I, I mean, we all know we manifest at will our own reality. I mean, with ascension, we're infinite. We can do anything. They don't want that. They don't want liberty. They don't want freedom. So, it so makes... essentially, uh, because of this, uh, I mean, the, we, uh, last week we had a discussion with Mary Rodwell and uh, the, the new children are being born with different DNA and the global education system in the so-called first world countries, so to speak, um, is shutting these kids down the education system is specifically designed to prevent these higher ascended children from being able to manifest their higher consciousness is there any way is this what you're talking about yeah, absolutely yeah but they're dumb manipulate ascension basically and coincidence that they um, pick 2012 to start pushing things here in the united states with the ndaa and other things that are designed to infringe on our rights as free beings now, what's I the mean, nvak AA. In other words, um, being able to come to your door at 3 o'clock in the morning and take you away and detain you without a lawyer or representation indefinitely, uh, that's not very good. And although I'm in the past, things like that in a more covert level, um, it's really in your face now. Um, what they're doing right now is blatant. It's bullying and it's obvious. And uh, I've been noticing it more and more. And now I'm tagged. I mean, I'm tagged because of what I went through as a covert um, lab Forward, that puts me on a, a more, uh, I guess, a higher risk level to some extent. So what I want to do uh, sh shortly, we're coming to, to the end of the first section. Uh, what I want to do is just let's spend the last few minutes establishing really where we're starting from. What sort of playing field are we on and what's the game? So wh wh where uh, you were tagged in 2004, uh, what was the game that you were exposed to and who are the players and then in part two we'll actually start to see how we can play the game to our advantage okay yeah do you want so, me to answer that yeah okay well the, the, basically the game itself pilot lab rat um to see and test out their technology on me to see how it would work and it worked very well so that was a success and insofar as the game playing goes, it's more for remote piloting. It can be used as an assassination program. I could be a Manchurian candidate. I can have the handlers in instead of going with the flow of the programming. So that category altogether, um, which, which is a universal extraterrestrial higher consciousness type benchmark, opposed to man's version of you know, control manipulation. So they're trying to create a, a, a higher level of consciousness, but under a lower level of control. 
correct. And I, to be honest with you, from where I was at with these guys, they don't like. They don't like. Oh they, God. they don't like what? Hear it. They, they're they're very anti-spiritual. Um, they were very anti even God in whatever form you call God, infinite consciousness. They didn't. They don't like. They want to be the God. They want to play God. And these guys operators as God with their man-made low order you know, communication system. So that's their version. They want to play God on earth is really what it boils down to and create that. It's just like the movie, the matrix, they create a false matrix where people can live in it and be deceived by it and be so dumbed down and so programmed by it. They'll never escape unless those of us like you and I stand up and say, wait a minute, that's, that's a false matrix. It's a false reality. So. That's what I called uh, a few years ago. I called it reality management, a reality management system. Very good. And yeah, we discovered, it uh, seems that's that they, they, the Illuminati started doing that in Ireland to shut down the higher consciousness in Ireland because there was a higher consciousness derived back to a higher spiritually evolved civilization, uh, which we're now discovering, you know, a couple of thousand years ago, which they came and shut down. So this seems to be a long term game plan, but. Uh, we're coming to the end. We're in the last uh, few minutes of the first hour. And uh, I think we might even be at less than that. So we'll, um, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to put on a cup of tea. If you want to get a cup of coffee, we'll reboot, put the okay. tapes back on, and we'll start the second hour in about two or three, two or three minutes, okay? Oh, you're right. so sweet. Uh, okay. Question.